Well, hello, Internet. Welcome to part five of my Python 2.5 through 2.7 tutorial, where I'll teach you how to program with Python. If you haven't checked out the other tutorials, you should definitely watch those. Otherwise, you will be very confused. In a previous tutorial, I taught you how to create lists. And we're mainly going to go through looping in this part of the tutorial, but I'm going to explain the in operator first because you can't really understand how looping is operating inside of Python without understanding the in operator. So let's create a list. And let's just give it some numbers. And we'll create a string also. Okay. Now with the in operator, I'm actually going to be able to check whether a value is in either the list or the string. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to print the screen the answer here. So we'll say is for in this list right here. If we execute this, it says true. Now let's change this to a value that isn't in the list and you can see it prints out false. So that's what in does and it also can work with strings. Just check if the word string is in string ex and you can see that it prints out true. So that's what the in operator does. It searches through a list or through a string or whatever to see if that value exists in there. Now why that is important is because of how the for statement works, which I'm gonna show you right after I show you how the while loop works. With a basic while loop, what you're basically doing with any looping is saying that you want certain actions to be performed while certain conditions are being met. And remember, you have less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, not equal to, or equal to. So those are the different operators you can use. And you could use the AND statement or the OR statement also within those conditions, like I talked about previously when I talked about Boolean values. With the WHILE statement, you're going to create what you call an iterator, where this is going to be a value that's going to continually change as the looping procedures continue. And you just follow that with the word WHILE. So let's say I want to execute certain conditions as long as x is less than or equal to 30, followed by a colon, and again, the obligatory white space that I went over in the previous tutorial. I'm going to say I want to print that to screen, and then I want to increase the value of x by 1, and this is shorthand notation for how to do that. I could, of course, put x equals x plus 1, but this is shorthand. I just put a plus sign followed by an equal sign, so that's what that guy does. And if I execute it, you can see that it prints that out to screen. Something else I didn't show you previously with the print function is if you want everything to show up on just one line, just put a comma at the end of that. And you can see here now that it printed all the numbers on one line. So that's another thing you can do with the print function. And that's basically what you do with the while statement. That's pretty much it. So understanding how the while statement iterates through a bunch of different statements as long as this condition is met. And of course, you can put braces around here to keep this neat, but you don't need to. And you know how the in statement or the in operator works. I'll now show you the often confusing for statement. So I'm going to create here a list of customer numbers. And then I'm going to create a list of customer names. And basically what the for statement is used for is for iterating through lists or dictionaries. And then I'll also store their ages. These are just random names I just made up. For i in list customer number. And you know what the in operator does. Basically, it's going to continue to do whatever I tell it to do in here as long as there are values inside of here. It doesn't have to be any specific item, just has to be some item. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to print to screen. I'm going to store the value of i in here. And if I print that out, you can see it prints to screen. Bob Smith is 23, Helen Jones is 70, and Mark Summers is 45. So that iterates through these lists that I created up here and outputs custom data based off of the value of i. Now I could use a for statement in ways very, very similar to how I used the while loop. Like let's say I wanted to print to screen digits one, two, three, four. I'm going to create a list again. I'm going to show you a shorthand way to do this here right after I do this simple way. Then I can go for i in list ex colon print i and you can see it printed out one two three four. So that works very similar to other programming's for statements but implements how you can use a while statement in Python with a for statement. Now let's say I wanted to print from 1 to 30 to the screen. Let's put a comma in here. You already know what that thing does. Well, if I wanted to do that, I could actually use what's called the range function. And this would allow me also to print a range of different values. 
meaning from 1 to 30. It's not going to print out 31 here on the screen. And if I run that, you can see it printed all of those values out there for me. And I also could take the range function and store it in a list by defining it outside of the for loop, which might keep things a little bit neater. Make sure you have your braces in the right place. Now I can call for i in list ex colon print i and put a comma at the end there. And you can see there's another way that I would be able to print those digits out to the screen. Now let's say I want to do something a little bit more complicated, like for example, or only print out to the screen odd numbers. Well, you saw the previous tutorial, you know how to use the if statement. And basically what I'm going to say here is if a number is divisible by two, I want to use the continue statement. And what the continue statement does is it jumps out of this if conditional back to the for statement and continues on where it left off, which means it's going to skip the else statement, which is going to be right here, and it's not going to execute it. So let's execute that. And you can see here, it printed out only the odd numbers. Well, let's say that we don't want anything past the number of 25 to show up. Now, of course, you can come up here and change this, but I want to demonstrate the break statement. And how I'm going to do that is with an elif statement. And I'm going to say, if it does hit 25, I want to break completely out of this for loop and not continue executing. And if we run that, you can see that whenever it hit the 25, it jumped out of the for statement. So the continue statement jumps you out of the current iteration, but continues running and looping through the for statement. And the break statement, if it is hit, jumps you completely out of the for statement all to Together. So there's a bunch of different ways to loop and how to use the in operator. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And don't worry, we will get much more complicated very soon. Till next time.